All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Conquest, of course. And we've got to talk about Darth Bane and why this is going to be the most important Conquest we've had in a very long time. I actually have no qualms admitting that I think this could be the most important Conquest we've had in Galaxy of Heroes. I would argue that this could even be more important than the Fury Class Interceptor Conquest was. I will explain that in more detail, but first and foremost, let's make sure you guys like and subscribe, comment down below, let me know your thoughts, and we've got to give our shout out to the channel members. Oops, I accidentally covered my fat face. Come on now, get down here. Get down here. There we go, there's my fat face. All right, thank you guys so much for all of your continued support. If you're interested in joining channel memberships, again, that link is down below. To my Wampa and Jedi Master tier members, you guys are all fantastic people, and I very much appreciate you, and of course, we can't forget those who are on the council, even if you aren't yet granted the rank of master. Thank you guys again for continuing to put your faith in me to give you good content that helps you grow your account. Let's get into the game here. Let's talk about this. So to fully expand on why this conquest is going to be extremely important, we need to take a look at the past few conquest characters. So let's start with a Fury class Interceptor and the Leviathan. A lot of you would say that was the most important one. And I would argue that the thing was... You needed to have Malgus for this to be an important conquest. So it was important to people who had Malgus. But if you didn't have Malgus, this was not an important conquest to you because it doesn't you couldn't use this ship yet. So it's one it was one of those situations to me where I think this conquest, there was like two camps of people. The ones who this was like the most important thing they'd ever done because of Leviathan. And then there's those people it's like this really doesn't matter because I'm still I'm not able to do get Malgus yet, right? So I left that off. That's the one caveat I would say that for some people, the Leviathan would obviously be more important. But here's why I think this one is going to be very ridiculously important. So let's start with Admiral Trench here. So Admiral, these three conquest units were not as free to play friendly because of the factions that they lifted. Now you may think, oh, Phil, well, Separatists, everybody has Separatists. But let's kind of just deep dive these Separatists a little bit. So let's talk about like the prime trench team with Dooku, Jango, Newt, Gunray, and Wat Tambor. A lot of us needed Wat Tambor for Sith Eternal Emperor. So right there, there goes Wat bye-bye. Okay, then you needed Newt Gunray at, you know, decent relic levels. Well, most players, most players do not relic Newt Gunray until you're going for Lord Vader. So there's already how many people who don't have a relic Newt Gunray. Then you think about a character like Jango Fett. Jango is, is a very good character, but a lot of players use him as a bounty hunter because they need a really solid bounty hunter in that team that if you don't have that, you think, like, if you don't have Fennec, you know, Mando and Grief maybe are there, but, like, you use Django a lot as a bounty hunter. I did for a very long time. So, I felt like Trench, as good as he was, and, I, like, I, you know, and obviously all of you say, oh, Trench on the bench, but in my personal opinion, a character like Trench was a solid lifter for these things. He does make them better, but a lot of players didn't have that, as, wasn't an option for them because of their roster, right? So, then... We got Terran Malakos, and this is one of those situations where I think you really need to understand the dynamics of the unaligned force user team. You think about, like, I'll just go to this real quick of, you know, this is the team that you really ended up using Malakos with in 5v5. 3v3, you're using Kylo Ren on mass, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, Malakos. So already you're kind of limited as to the players who could really benefit from Malakos were a much smaller part of the player base because even with that supreme leader kylo ren kylo ren amassed and terran malakos it's still very i want to say very rng dependent it's still not a hundred percent against leia in 3v3 and in 5v5 it you know that's it just kind of falls apart so this is again just one of these situations where this is kind of the team you needed to fully take advantage of malakos and these characters are still relatively new they're not accelerated yet People aren't going out of their way to farm them unless you're getting Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. And I'm going to show some data then. And then finally now, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. Kind of another situation where a lot of players, you guys probably don't have an Imperial Remnant team that can take advantage of Dark Trooper Gideon. And even more so, are you willing to sacrifice Moff Gideon away from that General Veers team? For a lot of players, they can't do that. So again, I'm just trying to paint the picture here that the, f the past couple Conquest units have not been as free-to-play friendly, where Darth Bane's is extremely free-to-play friendly. And I'm going to explain that here. Let's go over to the screen capture, and we're going to go to StarWarsGalaxyFears.gg. 
So on this sheet, I've showed you guys this before. This is the relic player data. And what I want to show is if we scroll down here towards the bottom, we get down to in the 20,000 range here. So here's Seer Junda right here. There's 20,000 relic Seer Junda in the game right now. As of, you know, what, 14 hours ago, there's 20,000. There's more relic Leia Organas than there are Seer Jundas in Galaxy of Heroes. And then you come down here to Admiral Trench. Admiral Trench, there's 17,000 relics. And then Terran Malakos is right here at 16. 16,000 Malakos relics. They're just, he's not that free to play accessible, not because he's not a good character, but because you a lot of players don't have the full resources to take advantage of someone like him. If we go down to Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, just to further drive home our point, only 5,000 players currently have him at relic levels. Again, this is a faction where when I looked up here, I believe it's Stormtrooper is the first one at, where is he at? Here he is. There's 40, there's 27,000, 27,000 relic Stormtroopers. So again, the player base is kind of looking at their account and saying, I can't really benefit from Malakos Trench and even Dark Trooper Moff Gideon because I don't have their teams built up. I've got to go build their teams and invest in an extremely expensive conquest character. That's why I'm saying they're not free to play friendly. Not because they aren't good characters, don't lift factions and give you additional options on offense and defense, including Admiral Trench, but their teams required are a bit too much. You know, the Separatists being the most free to play friendly of them, but still not one that a lot of players could make that team right away because of Watt Tambor being needed for Sith Eternal. So you have to break up Geos and it just, a lot of players weren't there for that. So, why Darth Bane now is going to be the most important Conquest character, right? Why is Darth Bane going to be the most important? Because of how free-to-play accessible he is. And I'm going to flip back over to the game real quick just to show you guys my account. So again, as I was showing, this is the current, what I'm building right now. Currently building this, so I've got to get Cal Kestis and a Fulcrum up to Relic 5, and then Seer's going to go to Relic 7. Still have a long way to go to get Jedi Knight Cal, so I'm not really pushing there crazy hard yet. So I've got my Dark Trooper Gideon, Darth Bane. And just to show you, this is my team right here that I could use with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. I'd need to Relic Death Trooper, need to Relic Storm Trooper. Not horrible, but not fun. But we also need some Zetas on Storm Trooper and two more Zetas on Scout, plus all the Gideon stuff. So a lot more additional investment to really get this team operating on full cylinders. Whereas I've got Sith Eternal unlocked and I have leftover Sith that I could use with Darth Bane. And that's why I say this is a no brainer because so many players have Sith Eternal and these leftover Sith to take full advantage of a character like Darth Bane. This isn't somebody where it's this kind of out of the range faction where he's, you know, where it's going to be good. Go back to the screen capture here. Go back to galaxyfears.gg. Let's scroll up here to the top. And our Sith Eternal is right here. Sith Eternal Emperor. Oops. 164 thousand relics Sith Eternals in the game. 164,000 people can directly benefit from getting Darth Bane if they hammer this conquest. So you wonder why this is so important is because this is a character who fits into teams that you've already, that a lot of the player base already has built, that a lot of the player base will build at some point in time because you think of the Leviathan, it gives you a lot of leftover Sith. Lord Vader does, Sith Eternal does. It's, it's such a broad faction that you can use with Darth Bane. I really really cannot stress how important I think this conquest will be because of this. It's just so, you, you've got, look at this. There are, like I said, there's what, 160,000 Sith Eternal Emperors at Relic levels? That's 10 times as many as there were Ma Terran Malakos. So, you know, you think it's what, eight times as many of Seer Junda, right? Seer was what, 20,000 and Sith Eternal's 164. Far more players are gonna be able to benefit from Darth Bane. So in my personal opinion, guys, as I look at this conquest coming up, you need to be fully prepared to go all in for Darth Bane. And that's going to be a scary thought for a lot of us because this conquest is definitely not going to be easy. They're not going to make it easy on us. They're going to cause us a lot of consternation, a lot of problems with this farm. I actually have a really, really I kind of get scared when I think about it of what this could mean. So what I would tell you, if you're below 4 million galactic power and you're close to it, bloat to get to 4 million. Hard mode conquest is infinitely more valuable than normal mode conquest. If you're in those easy and normal modes, again, just do your best. There's not a lot you can do. Conquest at that point is really about giving you resources to build your account to the point that you can do hard mode. I understand that. But if you're above 4 million, you've got to hammer hard mode conquest. 
And I think what you really want to be aiming for, I always tell players this, aim for box six. Box six is your ticket to, you know, free characters in six conquests. You do not need to buy any passes there as long as you can continuously get box six. You will unlock characters in six conquests, right? It's obviously it's longer, you know, it's not getting it in three but it is still getting a character without having to spend any money, just really having to spend your refreshes in place, you know, play smart with your roster. So I'm going to be saying that I think box six will be probably the most likely scenario for me because you know that they're not going to make this easy, that they're going to require those, you know, new Mandalorian characters to survive, right? That you're going to need 12 and Grogu or Paz Vizsla, or we're going to need Keller and Beck to do something that, they, like, those characters, they've said that, that they do that, that those new characters come into play. I could see Dark Trooper Moff Gideon having a feat, Malakos having some feats. It's going to be a very difficult conquest, but it's going to be so important because Sith Eternal right now is a character that a lot of us, including myself, you just don't have good uses for him. You're using him to beat Malgus. You're using him to beat some random team, you know? If you could use Sith Eternal to counter other Galactic Legends that are, you know, you think of your Kenobis, your Lord Vader's. Um, I get, I, I'm not sure about these two. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm not sure how well he could do against these two teams. Be very interested, but I don't know that he could quite take these two teams yet. I think these, you know, think Lord Vader, Kenobi, maybe potentially being able to beat Rey, because again, the big thing that's been, that hurts him with Rey is the healing immunity, the damage, and if he's getting extra survivability, defense, things like that, it could be a lot more challenging for people to get you know to lose with Sith Eternal so it's going to be a very offensive team which is the other point I want to bring up here before we leave before I leave you guys right now it seems like Sith Eternal is going to be the primary home for Darth Bane which means completely offensive galactic legend and conquest character which is fine right that's okay but there's also that possibility of using Darth Bane with leftover Sith and the character I want to point out here is Sith Assassin She's got her ship, which is key in the Leviathan Mirror match. There's a, plenty of guys in my Fleet Arena shard. When I look here, when I go into my Fleet Arena, and I'm just going to pop pop open a couple of them here. So I've got, like, Cop Man here, where he's got a Relic 9 Sith Assassin. Look at um, this guy here. Where's he at? You know, uh, Millennial Falcon. He's got a High Relic Sith Assassin. Another Relic 8 Sith Assassin. Um, and I think I'll show one more guy. Just a good, There's more and more characters. I think Jonathan is the same guy. Yeah. Another Relic 8 Sith Assassin. A lot of players are placing high Relic levels on Sith Assassin because she makes that mirror match significantly easier. Right? She does. She absolutely makes that fight significantly easier. I'm um, just looking at this guy. Yeah, even this guy. Relic 7 on his Sith Assassin with a low star Leviathan. Probably still doing very well because his Leviathan is... Because his Sith Assassin is fast. So... A lot of players are putting extra relic levels on that character, which could be important. That's going to play a big role in the, you know, months to come, if you will. Remember, Darth Bane's kit benefits from his team having extra relic levels. So, if you have a Sith Assassin and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to use her in that team and I'm going to take her to higher relic levels. It'll eventually help your Darth Bane. That's the one use I'm really excited for is I'm curious how many players in that end game you think a guy like arnold he's not really going to use use his trench team so he's going to keep watt tambor and maybe armor with his sith eternal emperor and then he could make a bane team and potentially beat a lot of really good stuff with that bane team i'd be very curious to see what bane with the leftover sith can do and that's why i think this one is so important it's either a character for your sith eternal to help you counter those top tier teams or it's giving you another option on defense or offense to get more out of parts of your roster that just are not doing anything. So, again, guys, I think as far as free-to-play friendly goes, this conquest is going to be extremely free-to-play friendly, not necessarily because of the feats, but because the character it's giving you is helping a faction that has needed it and is very common in this game. It's one that a lot of players have. Like, let's just go... I'll end it. I, I promise... I, I'm, I know I'm, like, rambling on a little bit. I promise I will end it here after I just show you guys a few things. If we go in here, and let's just look up Sith Assassin. Control F. Sith Assassin. There's 35,000 relic Sith Assassins in the game. Let's go to Darth Maul. Darth Revan. Uh, where's Maul? Darth Maul. 200. Look at this. 270. Oh, that's Malak. Whoops. Come on. Give me. 
There's Darth Maul. 200,000 relic Darth Mauls. Uh, let's go to Sith. Sith Marauder, 200,000. Like, there's so many of those guys in this game. Look at Darth Sidious here, 190, 193,000. So these guys, these leftover Sith, Count Dooku, look at that, 262. So what am I showing you? I'm showing you that the leftover Sith that you could potentially be using with Darth Bane are far more common in this game. It's going to be far more player friendly. And I think a lot more of you are going to be able to benefit and get more out of your roster because of this. So that's the video, guys. Hopefully this encourages you to go for Darth Bane. Let me know your thoughts down below. As always, smash that like button. Subscribe for more content like this. And if you're still watching right now, Wampa is king in the comments. I love all you. May the force be with you. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.